Women's Soccer Night in Nanaimo for Adam Manson. The stakes are high. Nanaimo is not a place where you're going to come and get an easy win, that's for sure. And it never has been. And as long as I'm playing, it never will. In this league of former pros and varsity stars, Manson is versatile and a veteran. His family is here cheering his dad, Gary, proud. Man, it's what we do. You know what I mean? My brothers, they all played soccer. Everybody's always played soccer in my family. That's just something in our blood, I think. In fact, the Mansons are something of a soccer dynasty. But Gary had no inkling of it until the lost story of his grandfather was found. And that story starts here in East Vancouver. I smoked a lot of crack along this line here. 13 years ago, a crack addicted cabbie named Robert Janning hit rock bottom. I recognized that if I was gonna carry on the way I was, uh, I probably didn't have a lot of time left. And, um, and there was something inside of me that wanted to continue living. Struggling to stay clean, he took up a curious hobby, uncovering the history of soccer in British Columbia. My obsessive compulsiveness was transferred into doing research. He became a regular in the public library archives. For years, he traced the roots of soccer in the new colony to 1891, when miners, loggers, aristocrats first gathered to cheer the kicking of a pigskin. But in those 19th century accounts, one name kept popping up, Harry Manson of Nanaimo. He always seemed to play off fast forward lines. From all accounts, he had a powerful right-footed shot. Most surprising, he lived here, the Snunemoch village, his traditional name, Husseimoth. The Snunemoch were a world apart, less than human to many settlers, but they took to this new sport. The Indian boys are beginning to show great talent for this enjoyable and healthful exercise. Reported the Nanaimo Free Press in 1892 when they started their own team, the Nanaimo Indians, led by Harry Manson. He didn't care if he was playing with white men or against white men. Uh, you know, he was just happy to, to play his game. In 1898, with BC's championship on the line, Nanaimo did the unthinkable. An all-white team recruited two Aboriginal stars. One was Harry Manson, who scored a goal, the first Indigenous player to achieve that milestone. In 1904, the young star led the Nanaimo squad, now dubbed the Indian Wanderers, to a city championship. I try and imagine what it's like being on a field in Lady Smith with you know, a couple of thousand people on the sidelines. They're all white. It's a very intimidating atmosphere. You know, and they're all hurling abuse at these 11 indigenous players. And Screaming, kill, kill the yeah, savages. Yeah, kill the savages. You know, these are miners. They're rough and, uh, and tough people. And the uh, Snenemach Indian Wanderers won the match 6-0. So what a way to say up yours. <laughs> in 1907, Manson and three other Nanaimo were starters for Nanaimo, again playing for West Coast Soccer's biggest prize, the Challenge Cup. The savages are all past masters in the football art, declared the free press. Final score, Nanaimo, 4-1. All goals from Nanaimo players. That's Harry beside the cup. But when it came to the celebratory banquet, Harry and the other Snanaimo players weren't invited. Despite all these obstacles of segregation that were being constructed around him, he was breaking a color barrier in sports long before uh, Jesse Owens or Jackie Robinson did so in the United States. He must have had a pretty good attitude and outlook upon life when the attitudes of the world around them were not as admirable as the qualities that Harry embraced. Then, February 1912, tragedy struck. Harry's infant son, Adam, took sick. 30-year-old Harry headed to town to fetch medicine for his son. And on his way back, 
he attempted to jump a moving coal train that was headed in the direction of the reserve and he mistimed his approach and, and that wound up being uh, the demise of Harry Manson. The impact, catastrophic. Harry's children were sent to Kokwalitsa, a residential school. One died there. Boarding schools swallowed up the next generation too. Gary recalls his grandfather's death as a wound never healed. My father was bitter about it. That's kind of what I knew because of that loss. What's that big one back there? I, think, I don't know that what that was one is. That's the most sportsmanlike. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger than the first place one. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Soccer helped Gary recover from his own residential school trauma. The trophies are just a witness to pride. Their kitchen, a shrine to Gary's years of coaching the Snaima snipers in native soccer tournaments up and down the coast. Then, Gary inherited his grandfather's hereditary name, Husseinoth. He knew little about him, so he took a trip to the archives. All he found, a coroner's report, in which railway workers testified it wasn't their fault Manson died, he was intoxicated. It broke my heart to read that, somebody calling him a drunk and it was his fault that he got run over by, by the train. I wanted to come running home with, this is who our grandpa was or whatever like that. So I didn't get to do that. And I think I just put it somewhere and didn't share it for a while. Then, who should show up one day but Robert Janning. Hey, hey Harriet. Nice to see you. With the amazing tale of Harry Manson, soccer pioneer. I grew up with the TV and there's always heroes on there now. Now I have a grandfather who's a hero. And he's always been there, but was never spoken of how great he was in soccer. All the prejudice and stuff that went on and he just carried through. Robert and the family launched a campaign. This year, the Canadian Soccer Hall of Fame voted to induct Harry Manson as a trailblazer. When he phoned and he was gonna be inducted and the tears just started to flow. You know, it was like, and I couldn't pick up the phone, you know, just to phone my family. But the story isn't over yet. I'm worried about getting broken into and that it might be stolen. Yeah, you don't want it to be taken. No. Robert kept digging and he managed to track it down, stashed away and forgotten in someone's basement. It's the Grand Challenge Cup of the Nanaimo Football Association, 1891, which makes this trophy one year older than the Stanley Cup. He bought the cup, hopes to restore it to its former glory and award it once again in a special tournament for at-risk youth. To actually see something that he touched, an artifact, is uh, very emotional for me. Harry set such a wonderful example for today's youth to live up to, to emulate. Now, soccer has even more meaning for the Mansons. For Gary, the unexpected arrival of Robert Janning brings to mind indigenous creation stories about the first being who fell from the sky. That's what Robert is to me. A person who fell from the sky, out of the blue, you know, to bring this medicine to my family. Such is the healing power of a story of a man who loved soccer a century ago, now getting his due. Duncan McHugh, CBC News, Nanaimo.